All right, guys, welcome to a bonus episode of Outer Worlds. This will be the final episode, and uh, the spoiler floodgates are well and truly open as we delve deep into some of the stuff we may or may not have, well, we may have missed um, during our playthrough and um, to explore some bits and pieces in a little bit more detail. Um, but before we jump in, uh, I was just having a conversation on stream where I've just um, thought I'd include it in the video. Um, thanks to LB for like the, the previous, the final episode, the finale. Like the, if it was on a bit of paper, it would probably be like, the comment would be like this big <laughs> on um, the thing. And yeah, I just want to like, thank you for taking the time like for, you know, commenting and, and just having some discussions with me about this since I've finished the game, LB. Um, one thing um, I think that was come apparent, and I don't know if it's because I like played five episodes of The Stranger midway through the story, but I kind of, I kind of feel like I maybe um, lost sight of everything that was going on in like the final two episodes um, with regards to like what the Ash Twin project and everything was about. And I think like re on reflection in that final episode, maybe my th um, thoughts and theories were a bit like a, a bit whack in as much that um, I'd almost lost sight of like the, the, the actual understanding of everything. Um, there was a bit of confusion going on between some people um, in like the chat and things that we were talking to after we'd got like the final cutscene and everything. Um, so yeah, I kind of like, if, 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 if it seems like I wasn't appreciating and understanding what was going on in the final episode, I think I just need to apologize. I said, I don't know if it's because I spent so much time away from the main quest doing the DLC stuff uh, and then came back to it. Um, but yeah, no, really excited to jump in today. Let's say we're going to, um, we're going to try and finish off, find some of the other endings. We're going to hopefully find some other little bits and pieces. Iron Smeltery wants to, um, wants me to hydrate and I've got a special treat. I've got a very special treat for because it is the last stream. I haven't got a, I haven't got a campfire, but I've got my marshmallow on my stick. And, um, in honor of outer wilds, because you know, I know LB is not keen on the, um, on the sound of them eating the marshmallows in game. So this one should be a bit quieter. So I'm going to chow down on my marshmallow on my stick while um, we jump in to our final bonus episode of Outer Wilds. To be fair, actually, I've got my I've got my heater on here. Maybe maybe I can maybe I can toast it on my heater. This is like a health and safety nightmare right here. But how about that? I don't know if my camera will reach actually because it's clipped in and stuff. But ah, it won't reach. I don't know if you guys can see, look, let me just, um, I'm gonna roast it. No, Cause if I put my heater up, it goes off, but if we could, health and safety nightmare, look. Roast the marshmallow on the fire. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not the best idea, is it? Let's be honest. <laughs> oh, jeez. Mm. Good marshmallow. Somebody tell LB it's safe to come back. <laughs> All righty then. Um, thanks for the hydrate as well, Owen. Hope you're well, buddy. Welcome along. Welcome, welcome. Um, yeah, so. Um, what to do, what to do, what to do. I suppose, first things first, let's um, sleep for five minutes, right? And then we can... Um, Oh, that's the wrong one. We'll sleep for five minutes and then uh, we'll head over to the Ash Twin and go and grab the warp core and um, maybe we'll look at the Stranger episode, uh, Stranger endings first.
Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Good to get your exercise in, Iron. <laughs> I'm not sure how going up and down an elevator gets you uh, your exercise in, but we had to walk and push a button. Like, that's surely some form of exercise, right? So one thing I was um, since I've finished the game, I don't like. I don't always um, like to look at the um, a game's achievements when I'm like in the middle of playing through because sometimes seeing the achievements and stuff can actually spoil the game. Now, one thing I did notice was there was. Um, Uh, I don't want to be on all part. I pressed the wrong button. One thing I did notice is something. <laughs> Welcome back, LV. Yeah, so um, let me try and get back on that train of thought. I, I, I don't like to look at achievements um, before I've played a game sometimes. It can be quite spoilery. So I've started to look at some of the um, the bits and pieces and I remember what my thought try to thought it was gonna be um there's an achievement for like getting all the all the ship logs now I'm about to die a horrible death um so that this is it's, it's interesting because I, I I haven't got anything on the ship log which is like not finished so I'm interested to see like where I've missed text or where I've missed entries onto the ship log. Because I haven't had that achievement, so. There's dozens of ship logs that you can get even when it doesn't say more to explore in them. Okay. I'm wondering if there's like I one of the areas I had been thinking though of like where there possibly is some extra bits and pieces is the um, uh, the hanging city because I'm not really sure I managed to get around everywhere in the hanging city because of the nature of the place and the fact that everything is falling apart the whole time. I'm I'm pretty sure there'll be stuff there that I've missed, but yeah, it was quite interesting to uh, it's quite an interesting achievement for me to see that um, I hadn't got that. It looks like there's also like quite a few fun achievements in the game as well. Steam got this how many should be in each ship log and what uh, what the commonly missing ones are. Okay, that's interesting. We'll uh, we'll have to uh, take a note of that, won't we? At some point or other. I was like, what's that? But that's the uh, the interlocker, isn't it? Started real mist today, Mika. Um, you stuck right at the beginning. I feel I can't. You feel like you can't do a thing. So uh, I, I don't know. I don't know anything about any of the mist games. To be fair, not. But like I said, I have. Um, I think I. I think it was real mist that I've purchased as well. A while back, or maybe it was the masterpiece edition. I'm not really sure which one it is that I got. Um. But yeah, it's um, quite interesting. Um, you feel like you can't proceed anywhere. Definitely. I've been playing um, like as I've I've been playing like a lot of like 
point and click hidden objects or games. But I started playing. Did you ever play that one that I recommended to you that was free? That one that was like Broken Sword Mika, the um, Beneath a Steel Sky. I started playing that, and that's very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Very Broken Sword like. But um, that's. I, I found that that's pretty difficult to proceed. That's Quern vibes. Mm, okay. Big yikes. I remember what I remember like way back when, before before I even played it, I remember Deathwish started Deathwish has a habit of like starting games, playing them for one episode on YouTube and then like never playing them um ever again. Um and I actually remember he did play like Quern a one episode version of Quern and I think even he like struggled in a th in a two or three hour stream to make much progress um, from a puzzle from a puzzle aspect it's a, it's a really good game um, but it's it's it there's a lot of observation skills as well as like the puzzling aspect I felt with that game Right, we have our warp core, and we are going to head out to the stranger. At least we get this epic version of the track every time as well, which is um, pretty cool. Uh, right, so I want to go to the Hidden Gorge is where I want to go. Because that's the one, I think that's the one location where you can enter the, um, you can enter the dream world and you won't get killed at the end. Because that, that, because it's so high, it doesn't get submerged by the water. So I think that's probably as good a place as any to, um, let's see if we can get that achievement. Yeah. Final Voyage is on the OST. LB. Oh, the Dream World versions. Sorry, the Dream World versions. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I, I reread that. That makes sense. I was going to say, the Final Voyage is on the uh, OST. Is any of the strangest stuff on the OST though? Ah, okay, so this is. Um... Oh, I don't need to hold the warp core though, do I? I don't need to hold the warp core anymore, I can just leave it there. If the OST is released, I'm going to have to definitely um, check that out. Add it to my repertoire. I'm trying to build. I'm trying to build like uh, some uh, more of a library of OSTs that I actually own to potentially use on like stream intros and stuff. Also, going to have a chat with. Um, Mike to see if he um, if he's all right when we like using some of his tracks on stream intros and stuff. Which, yeah, be pretty cool. Mike's music's uh, pretty epic. All right, so which one should we do first? Let's um, uh, let's do the. Let's do the regular one. We'll do the regular ending where we just, um, we won't uh, kill ourselves, we'll just exist for eternity within the stranger. 
kind of wish there was like a way to control this like a little bit more this this sleeping like i wish there was a way to make it go a little bit faster if you wanted it to especially when you're kind of exploring and stuff towards the end of the game and you really like wanting to wait until the end of loops but Yeah. Sure. He sent me um I play I played um I can't remember whose map it was, but I played one in one of my recent portal streams and it had a track of his that I'd never heard before and it was really cool. It gave me such um it's probably a maker in the stream, but it gave me like such like trancy dancy vibes. It's a really good track. I will be honest though, the clock normally runs a bit quicker than this for me. I don't know why it's running so slowly uh, on this instance. That's uh, it's all good. Be a bit more of a chill stream. Not rushing around so much. Warmed up a bit in here. I've not been in my office like all day, about from like half an hour before we're streaming. Like so, nine o'clock at night, first time into my office, and it's absolutely Baltic. Oh, yeah, I woke up, didn't I? Um, so, let's... <gasps> now, I assume we're going to have to wait quite some time for anything to happen here. Because we're already jettisoned away from the solar system, haven't we, at this point? Jump on the top of the slot. What, that one? Or that one? Because that's the slider up. Oh, that one. I can't make that gap though, can I? You can jump out the gap? Okay. I don't need the artifact anymore. Now beyond the reach of the supernova, you'll find yourself the only inhabitant of an abandoned world. Surely something here must be edible. <laughs> uh, what about your unlimited supply of um, marshmallows? All right, so we're gonna rinse and repeat that, but we're gonna actually kill ourselves to enter the simulation. And uh, see what that gives us that time. It's quite interesting to learn from the um, the first documentary about the game, um, the first no clip documentary, not the the podcast. That the um, I can't think of his name, but the 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 guy who played Hero in Heroes was like behind, or is behind the um, the the Mobius. Or has something to do with Mobius. That's quite interesting to see that, like he he's got that much of an interest in um, games and game development that he um, he wanted to start something up. But it's it was quite it was really quite fascinating to hear about like all the challenges they had to face that like normal games don't like we've said it before about the fact that everything in the universe is constantly moving and nothing stands still and 
everything is loaded the whole time. Um, which is surreal to think, really. Because like most games would do, they would they most games would just unload an area that they don't need to um don't do that. Up we go. Um most games just unload areas when they're not used, but because of the dynamic nature of um the, the planets and everything that's um happening and everything is constantly evolving around you, um they had to kind of leave things leave things as being. I say what what else was really interesting as well is that it was interesting to hear that actually in the game nothing um the player doesn't move every time you move like everything in the universe is actually shifting around you uh i thought i turned all power off my bad You fire your scout in the stranger and then leave. You can see the inside. Yeah, so <clears throat> I, I I I picked up on that fact as well that um, they were talking about that if depending on where you leave bits and pieces, um, <laughs> they were considering adding adding in that achievement for like uh, technically crashing the game. If you your one place your ship somewhere else to probe somewhere else, um. But they were advised, and they were quite. They were they were warned about not doing it because um, they're potentially going to crash games consoles and things on the uh, on the console versions. It is like little things like that, though. That like when when you actually, when I actually listened to that documentary, it was. It's like, oh yeah, but I never like realized or thought about it. Like the, the the technical feats of the game. Like one of the things they were saying, like most most games are obviously flat two dimensional games, um, whereas everything in Outer Wilds is based on a on a sphere. So it, it's quite it's quite challenging. I can imagine how how challenging it really was to design something like this. It's like it's like the thought of like when you enter when you enter an atmosphere, it's like you're you're shifting from like a. You, you can kind of tell when you when you enter the atmosphere of a planet, it kind of shifts in a way, that um, it's like adapting to you being inside the atmosphere rather than outside and, and flying around it, but. Obviously, everything is 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 a sphere. No, it's just, it's it's even more. It's even more impressive when you kind of start to delve deep into the, the technical aspects of what it is and what it's doing. Or at least I found that anyway. Yeah. Indeed. I think I heard right as well when they were talking about the um, the inhabitants of the stranger. I think I heard them right them saying like the the version of the of, of like the recreated inhabitant that you see on the um, the end screen if once you've completed the DLC. I'm sure, if I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure they said that I, that was an early concept of what the inhabitants um, were going to look like originally. I think that's, I, th I think that's what I heard. I say, correct me if I'm wrong. All right, let's go and grab. So the, what, the the final scene, um, like the final picture after you get like the, I think it's, it's in like 14 billion years later or whatever it is, and then you see the 
for lack of a better term, like the the the, the well the, the the inhabitant that sort of appears right at the end with its when it turns its light its lamp on when it meets the other people that are sat around the campfire in the scene. Um, I, I think I was right in them saying, or, or I think I'm right that I heard them say that was an original concept for um, the inhabitants. Uh, the Yeah, the, the strange inhabitants. Yo, crazy. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? Happy weekend to you. Good to hear. Good to hear indeed. I always found like the way the stranger loads in like really weird. It almost loads in like the the way like the dark bramble kind of areas load in when you go through one of the the, the seeds, if you call it if you call them the seeds that is. Was there anything to see on? T was there anything else to see from on top of the um, the projection room, LB? Just out of uh, curiosity, you said like when we was here previously that um, to go up there. Ah, okay. You can still see it from the strange then, even though you've sort of like just jettisoned away. I drop the artifacts and we'll sleep. And then as soon as we wake up, we'll pick it up, we'll kill ourselves, enter the simulation. Okay. I was just about to say, it surely it depends which side of the stranger you're on, but um, I know that the damaged lab, because we come from it, from the um, the planet, our planet side and the Ash Twin side, obviously is facing the sun. So the um, laboratory side of it is um, facing the sun. I suppose if you was the other side and you was looking out the other window, then you wouldn't really see much. You'd probably see the bright lights, maybe. Well, you wouldn't even see it from there, would you? No, you'd have to look at, you would have to look at it from the right side. So, but yeah. Um, the laboratory side is the correct side to see the supernova from the stranger. 
I guess. Be interesting though to see like I think I probably picked up on this one when we was playing all right, no it's crazy. Thanks for stopping by and saying hi, but I appreciate it. Um I think I picked up on this one when we was actually playing the, the stranger, but obviously at various points as the water floods the um floods the stranger from the, the dam bursting its banks, it, it like extinguishes the flames in the lanterns of a lot of the inhabitants that are in the um, simulation but when we go in it from here there are still some um inhabitants here who have their flames active right so i'm, I'm quite curious as to like where they are in the simulation Like these ones, yeah, all of these here have still got their, well, apart from that one, no, they have all got their um, lantern still burning. Oh, what do you mean? The one that um, I stealth past, I'll be. How much time has passed? They don't even bother to hunt you anymore. Time passes and passes until your life becomes before is some half-remembered dream. If only you could wake up. It's almost like being like plugged into the Matrix, isn't it? Into like a an, a dream that never ends. It's um, it's quite a scary thought and quite a scary prospect of um how your life could end up. All right, so. Next, we'll go to the, um, I guess we need to go to the high energy lab, right? But we don't need to pull out the, we don't need to pull out the uh, core of the Ash Twin project for that one. Are there a lot of Easter eggs on the stranger? Let's, um, I want to concentrate at the minute on probably getting the um, the endings first, and then we can look at um, Easter eggs and other bits and pieces afterwards. Um, but we need, if I can remember where it is, my energy lab. There it is. What planet is that on again? Can you remember, Captain? I should probably set my timer just so. I don't know. It must be on Brittle Hollow. Oh no, it's on. It's on the Ember Twin. Drift through space, yeah, on my ship. If that's the ending that you're referring to, LB. Um, is there a quick way to the um, high energy lab? I can't remember. I can't remember how to. I can't remember now how to fly this ship. There's only the one way. Okay. Um, isn't that through the. Uh, I gotta remember how to get to there. Isn't it? Is it through the settlement or? Yeah, now there is a shortcut to that somewhere, isn't there? 
Um, yeah, above the gravity, gravity cannon, that's it. I'm thinking that this is the um, planet with the ice shortcut, but it's not, is it? If I remember, look, it's somewhere over here. There. That's the shortcut, isn't it? Okay. Um, and then, I remember... All of this ghost matter is pretty dead. By dead, I mean evaporated. Is there a way around this? Or do I have to wait? I have to wait here, don't I? Yeah, that's right. I have to wait for the sand to rise enough. I take it the hazard it's telling me about is the um, cacti. The orange heat plates? What are those? I need to go around here. I think I need to wait again here. I probably could fly over there if I wanted. Oh, okay. Is that what they are? They're heat plates. That's dead end. Okay. Follow the magical cable. That's a dangerous uh, way to go, isn't it? Oh, 
Okie dokie, we made it to the high energy lab, and I think we need to, if I remember right, we need to redirect the power somehow. Do we not? Yes, we do. Okay, so... We need to take a black core and a white core. <laughs> we destroyed the fabric of space time. Good job, Nock. Good job indeed. Oh really? Is that um is that an achievement or not? Oh, okay. All right. So, um, I think you said the other one is Quantum Moon, right? Yeah. Now I think we've got all the endings. A picture of our quantum moon. Oh, but I need to take the uh, actually, it's all well and good. But I need to take the core out first, I guess, don't I? So we can actually get rid of our scout because. Um, And we should have maybe slept before we left, but not to worry. We'll just um, sit around for a few minutes and do things and stuff. Let's make sure this is turned off, actually. Uh, yeah, everything is turned off. Excellent. We also need to um, look to see if we can do this as well. We need to see if we can. Um, we need to see if we can, um, if we're good enough to land on the uh, sun station before uh, with our ship. I'm pretty sure that's. Uh, I think that's an achievement. Although I'd rather sort of concentrate on any um, like Easter eggs and bits tonight rather than uh, worrying too much about achievements. I think one thing that's, that struck me about this game as well is like the achievements are I know, I know they are in any game but it might be weird for me to say but the achievements really are completely optional in this game you can go through the entire game and not pick up a single achievement um, if you don't want to and I think that's I, I was looking through it like the rarity of, of some of the achievements I think that's probably why some of them are so rare is because unless you really get invested a lot and want to spend all that extra time on the game um yeah you, you don't necessarily need to to even pick up a single achievement in here and 
Um, it kind of like goes back to a conversation we've been having um, a couple of times actually recently on the stream, whereby achievements seem to kind of be a way for game developers to kind of like cheaply identify how players are like proceeding through a game or, or they can they can gauge like how difficult their game is so to speak um rather than kind of like doing any proper sort of f uh, feedback and, and bits and pieces and actually finding out and talking to their fans um It's a way that, um, yeah, it's a way that game developers can kind of say, okay, well, X, X percentage of players got to this part of the game and X percentage of players got to this part in the game. Therefore, we should probably, you know, tweak this bit or make this bit harder because too many people are getting here kind of thing. Um, So when you kind of like play a game like this, which doesn't have because it doesn't like have those sorts of achievements, and by that I mean I'm not talking about sort of games like, yeah, I'm, I'm I mean I'm, I'm talking about like games such as like, um, well I I haven't played them for years, but like Call of Duty for example, it's like you would get an achievement like every time you complete the level. Or you would get an uh, achievement every time you complete a level at a certain difficulty. So it's almost like a cheap way for them to... Um, it's a cheap way for them to actually identify how far a player has got into a game. I'm not saying like on an individual level, of course, but as like a collective level um, of like a, a total percentage of players got this far in the game sort of thing. Yeah, analytics... I, tracking, yeah, I, I guess tracking is like the the wrong word to use, isn't it? Whereas the the achievements in 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 this game, and I have played a couple of games that are, that are very similar as well, but the achievements in Outer Wilds are very much a case that um, you are. Actually, I probably shouldn't do that because we're gonna have to pick up the quantum. Core, the, the core warp core aren't we so we're going to lose that picture anyway so it doesn't matter um yeah they are very much like okay if you are invested in the game and you want to spend some extra time in the game we are going to reward you for doing that as opposed to anything else so I think I re the, the original conversation I had on this matter was actually with Port Ponky. Um, we, we was chatting about it. I can't remember what it was, but I think it was probably playing Cube at the time. And um, I know it, I think it was him and he, he actually brought it up about the whole idea of like um, tracking uh, an, an analytics based on um, user progr or player progression rather than an achievements, rather than. Um, kind of actually going out and doing proper market research, so. Yeah, exactly, Mika. I think um, if you've got achievements that are within reason, I mean, I, I know some games which go completely the opposite end of the scale. So there's... Um, like Final Fantasy Nine, there's a um, there's an achievement on the PlayStation Four version, uh, PlayStation Four remaster version of that. And um, right at the beginning of the game, there is a mini game, which is a, a jump rope mini game. And they put an achievement in there to do like I think it was I think it's like a thousand jump the rope a thousand times without failing. And to me, that sort of achievement is just tedious.
it's just pointless. To, to me, it just seems like pointless filler. Exactly that. Oh, I can't leave the uh, I can't leave the warp core here. I mean, I don't mind. I don't mind difficult achievements um, by any by any means. I will happily, if if they're fair. I. No, what are you? Well, that was a waste of time. Um, if um. All right, I'll keep that in mind, LB. If if an achievement is is difficult to get, as long as it's fair, then I don't mind. But the the one in question that I just mentioned for the the Final Fantasy IX one, uh, I think the first the first two hundred jumps are the the actually like in sort of time with the music, which is okay. You can get it. You can get a rhythm going. You can you can quite easily do those first 200. But then after that, it just randomly like speeds up or slows down at random points, which I think is completely unfair um, for anybody that's you know hardcore enough to go for that sort of achievement. There's no sort... When you start to bring like RNG and randomness into a game or in, into anything like that, um, it's just completely unfair to the player. It's kind of like what I like about Celeste. I mean, Celeste could have easily put in um, trophies and achievements for um, the gold berries. But the, the developers knew that, obviously, Celeste is a game whereby it's completely dependent on the, the player ability as opposed to whether or not, you know, they, they're going to be even be able to do the gold berries in the first place. Therefore, they didn't make them achievements they made them as optional extras that if you felt like you wanted to go for them and you feel like you're good enough at the game to go for them you can but for anybody who is like an achievement hunter and, and wants to go for perfect games i'm gonna I'm go in the sun again in a minute if i'm not careful uh yeah for anybody that wants to go like go for the perfect games you are not forced to do it Makes a lot more sense to do them as like optional extras as opposed to um, forcing a player to actually do it, in my opinion. But, you know, I'm just a humble guy who doesn't know much about games development. LB's the man you want to be talking to. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, I did see on the. Um, I've popped. I haven't. I haven't been like. I, I don't like speak much on that. I do um, check to see what's going on in the Discord, and I did see that um, there had been a spreadsheet floating around. Um, it seems like a lot of people had suggested um, achievements for Duskers. Um, I think I, I also read the patch notes recently as well. It seems like. Um, some things have been worked um they've been doing a lot of work on the um the slime timer and the slime mechanics but i i i find though in this day and age though i think a lot of the personally a lot of the triple a studios have just lost sight of like what game development is all about 
and that's partly down to the introduction of and our acceptance of um, things like microtransactions and DLCs. It's too easy now for a game a game studio to um, make the game and then strip out half of it and then sell the other half of it again to then double the price of their original base game. And I, I kind of feel with a lot of AAA studios now, it's everything is geared up to, okay, we'll sell the game and then how much more money can we rinse out of people? But like I said, I feel like it's a double-edged sword because as, as, as players, of, as, as game players, we've almost made it an acceptable thing for game developers to do to us as as crazy as that might may sound you know um there are people out there who continue to pay for these microtransactions and continue to buy these dlcs and a lot of the time you know people are uh, and you know I, I've, I've done it in the past with call of duty um we're, we're buying these dlcs and these microtransactions even before like we've we've had a proper we've had enough time and, and proper understanding of whether the game is actually any good or not you know i've um I, i've been guilty of it with with call of duty before because i was i used to be really invested in the the zombies game mode and I would buy the season pass before even the you know I, before I'd even played the game because I was like okay well I'm going to be playing zombies I might as well just buy it anyway and again it, it comes down to the fact that um, these game developers are selling their content before they've had like a proper appreciation. Or understanding of whether or not it's wanted or not and that and that's what I, I think it kind of it should come down to more oh, actually I need to take a picture of this don't I it should come down more to the fact that the um, DLC should only be created realistically if there is um, a wanting for it from the community Not just because, oh yeah, it's what everybody's doing and we can make more money from it. It should be based on sales and whether or not the game is successful or not. And I think a lot of... We've, I think you can see it a lot at the minute as well. Like in recent times with... Um, with some game studios whereby... They've, they've been pressured and pressured. I think Cyberpunk... Cyberpunk uh, 2070, whatever it's called, was a prime example of that. It's like the developers knew the game wasn't ready and they did not want to release, release it. But because it had already been pushed back once, the, the, the publishers were like, no, we're putting it out. And that game was a complete and not a flop. It was so broken when it came out. But it's just, it's just the corporate people and the people at the top of the chain who don't really understand... The development process and don't listen to the game developers the people who are actually making the product and they just sort of almost throw them under the bus and they must have lost so much money with cyberpunk because there were so many people who ended up um getting refunds for cyberpunk it was um quite crazy yeah exactly and that's why I don't tend to support too many AAA game studios these days because I don't agree with the way they go about business at all. Uh, right, okay, what are we doing here? We are going to um, do something, aren't we? Hello, hello, hello. Doctor Prime's here. What's going on, buddy? Oh, I need to. I need to remember what to do. I need to go to the north.
I assume I'm going to the north area, right? LB, is that right? Mika, uh, sorry, Mika, not Mika. A doctor's never, never apologise, buddy. Everybody, everybody is busy and everybody has their own stuff to contend with. So I just appreciate it, you know, as and when you can make it streams. I don't think I ever found um, Solanum at this location before. What's the work of it? It will also work if you're at the sixth location where it opens to a wall. Ah, uh, that's the big cyclone. Had your second vaccine today. Nice. Um. I want. It was Timber Hearth that I kind of went normally to the northernmost point. Must not spin around too much because um, when I did this before, I kind of got a bit motion sick. There it is. heading to LB? Just anywhere here? Or do I need to go to where? I should have set my timer really. I don't know how much further we've got to, uh, to go. I'd find it quite funny if there was like some special dialogue here about like why why are you holding why are you holding the warp core? <laughs> Do you want to take the warp core? Surely, um, I, I don't know like which era Solanum's from though, but surely they would know something about the Astrium projects and about the warp cores. You would assume, or I would assume. But yeah, as you rightly said, um, just to go back to our other conversation, LBM, as you rightly said, you know, the, the there was there was a, um, a demand for the uh, the DLC for for this game, definitely. Um, much like there was for Celeste. Celeste is another game um, that um, people wanted more of. And um, Map Makes Games actually like released that as a free edition as well. You know they, they weren't interested in making any more money from it. They just wanted to expand this their game, which had had such you know great um, feedback 
I mean, Celeste nearly won uh, Game of the Year over God of War when it was released back in 2019. That's how sort of um, popular and well-received Celeste was. I just don't buy into all this kind of like, um, you know, like, uh, or oh, early access, you know, pay now early access because all you all you're doing is paying to be a beta tester. But then there's no guarantee that the product will actually come out when it, at, at the end of it. So I've seen some some games that have been in that sort of stage and they've completely sort of like flopped and. Um, not even gone anywhere almost like developers are sometimes making a quick making like something that looks nice taking people's money and then running so, um, I don't know I, I should stop this conversation because um, the more I talk about it the, uh, the, uh, the more frustrated I get about it maybe I'll just sit down a moment and chill Knock head stream. My mic does reach down here. Head stream. I know I'm speaking the truth, Mickey. Yeah, I know. Um, start with my desk and I'll be able to see a bit more of my head. It's just one of those things, though, that's kind of like a frustrating topic. So one thing, one thing about this, like while while we're here, while we're still here, actually waiting for the loop to finish, um, I didn't quite understand what. Um, when it was in the finale, I can't remember who it was that was saying it, but I didn't quite understand like how or why Solanum is quantum. Obviously, it's her body that we see scattered around on the quantum moon, but how has how did she become quantum exactly, or is it just a case that because she's on the quantum moon and she died on the quantum moon? her body becomes quantum I, I suppose that, that, that's the case isn't it because she something happened to her or she died on the quantum moon um right okay yeah So she was on a pilgrimage at the time the the ghost matter um, event occurred, and then she was just kind of she she died here, but then continued to kind of zoom around. Her body did um, whilst she was in this location. She remains alive, I guess. How come she's alive in this... Is she alive in this location because the ghost matter didn't hit here? I don't understand how, like, she can be... But depending on where... The quantum moon is, depends on whether or not she's alive or not, right? Are we kind of like saying like when you uh, is it almost like when you stand on the quantum moon you kind of exist in six locations yeah but I that's why I can't get my head around though if, if she's dead she's dead though no 
I know obviously when we was in the, the quantum caves that when we were learning about quantum mechanics, the skeletons and things were moving around and doing different bits and pieces depending on whether we were observing them or not. And I get that things move around when they're quantum. I just can't get my head around the whole... Six possibilities that are all real at once until an observer collapses them to one reality. Oh, here we go. How long have you been here? Minutes? Years? You're unsure, but it seems your journey has reached its end. Yeah, I'm not sure I... I don't know. I'm not sure I will properly grasp that, if I'm honest. But... Um, yeah, it's just kind of like the whole thing of like... I get the moving around under quantum and whatnot. You might think I'm strange, but I have a hypothesis that I am not entirely alive. Perhaps my journey has reached its end. Hmm. I think I'm just going to leave that one to like... Not, not too dumb to understand the Solanum quantum event occurrence type thing. <laughs> Is there no achievement for... Um, I think there's no achievement then for... No. No achievement for that. Interesting, the quantum moon stayed there while I blinked. All right, so um, there's all our endings, I believe, all six of our endings. Um, all right, so where do we go next? Um, so one of the things you said was about the uncensored reel on the stranger. So, I think we should head over to there. I died, drift, quantum, space-time, one and two, stranger, dream. Oh, space-time, one and two. Yeah. Quantum, we've done. Drifted, we've done. The eye. The eye is the... The final one, right? Yeah. And then the stranger in the dream. Yeah. Six. There's nine endings. What did I say six? It's nine endings. All right, so whereabouts are we heading for this one, LB? Are we on the stranger or are we in the... Um okay. The, the shortcut is the... Um Should 
The shortcut is the um I'm quite mad that like you can open that door and like open a vacuum into space but yet once you're through to here there's like no vacuum almost um endless canyon which one's that remind me don't say this one <laughs> I said don't say this one LB I don't think I'm going to be able to uh, go against the current, am I? Hey, look on the bright side. We get to ride around the stranger. That's a positive, right? Okay, well, yeah, that would have probably made sense as well. So, just to go back to like this, like where this archive is, um, and obviously we we use the stealth approach, right, to get to the uh, this archive. What's the what is the real approach? Is it to is it to, again to drop the lantern, or is it to like wait until? I, I don't think that's we're right in saying that, like that's that guy doesn't die. There's no point in the um, in the time loop where that guy dies, is there? So, yeah, what is the, like, correct way to do it? Is it to drop the lantern and, like, work your way around it, much like you did? Uh, oh, you idiot. All right, making no worries. See you later. Thanks for hanging, buddy. Appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Okay. Okay. Let's 
secret bridges. Let's see if I can remember which one it is. I'm sure I will. I'm sure it'll be fine. Where's the door? The door is there. So the secret one was here. over here somewhere, isn't it? Okay, so I, don't, I can even... Hold on. Um, I can still walk over this, can't I, without the, um, being in this one, if I remember rightly. Trust in it. Uh, I can't walk in a straight line. the inhabitants will see you, but it's too slow to catch you. Are you sure about that? Where am I walking to? Is it like... Oh, man. There. Okay. And then where am I going? That's right. I think it was that I guess that was the warning call. Is this the one where I need to um jump on the top of the elevator for? Jumping onto here. Uh, hold on. Is 
Let's try that again. So then there is a hidden slide rail on the left side. Okay. Uh, don't I need the artifact though to Don't I need my artifact to So I drop it here. Okay. It's a pretty well hidden uh, Let's drop my artifact. Okay, I can get it if I just time the uh, the pickup right. There we go. Got it. I'll be honest. That's how. That's what I was perceiving you to to be to be saying. Actually, LB. So. I should have just placed this artifact in here for a start. To be fair. This is uh, an uncensored reel. You said. about the lamps. Okay, this is the one from the laboratory, right? With version one, which does nothing. Version two, our old friend Explodey. Did we not? Okay, so the exploding part was cut out of the original, yeah? Yeah. Poor Nomai. Uh, poor st inhabitant. Uh, not very fun at all. Not very fun for them. Uh, so I'm guessing that's the only thing to see here. If you go back at the event, it was guarding. Guard isn't guarding a room of portraits.
Uh, I think I may have missed something up here. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I just wanted to, um... I wanted to, um... Go somewhere else. I suppose I don't really know. The problem is I don't really know where it is at the moment. Not dead. Not dead. Ah, uh, yeah, I'd be dead. So, not be dead. Yeah, it was quite annoying that it like kind of didn't work, didn't um, move straight away, so. Set my timer though this time, then I'll know how long we've got. We've got average time this time anyway, because we won't be, um, so we won't be going to um, the archive this time. Feels like feels so natural, just like launching off here and going towards a stranger, having done it so many times.
Are these all the sort of things that you, um, they're in your, I take it these are all the sorts of things that are in your, the, uh, spoiler videos you've been putting out, uh, Yeah, well, I've I've been adding to my own. I don't know you you've got a playlist, but I have been adding them to a private playlist as well. So, so um, once I was all done, I would start watching them. But I did sort of want to just uh, before I watched them, I wanted to uh, do this stream tonight, just to sort of experience any anything we can um, on video and on the stream, and then uh, I plan on spending some time uh, next week. Hopefully, just to go through some of them videos. I don't know when exactly, because I've got to uh, I'm actually working down in the office on Monday and Tuesday, so be um, won't be uh, having my U normal YouTuber compliment for the day while I work down there. I'll still need to use the bridge over here, won't I, to um, to get across the other side. The Lore Explorer, I'll have to, uh, if I can check that one out. Alright, let's see if we can't, um, get past this guy this time. Going back. <laughs> Quite interesting that they're like they're slow, but they're not slow enough once they go into hunt mode. <laughs> you don't stand a chance. I also find it quite interesting like they've got like a natural kind of like trumpet kind of call about them. I always like lure them from like down here. No, I actually have to go.
Am I safe? Does he only guard the entrance? Okay. So, who is that exactly? And can I extinguish this? I was going to say, it's almost like... It's almost like my character as an inhabitant. Okay, so it doesn't matter if I get caught now, right? So, place place the artifact on the big bridge leading to the house. So not the one from the archive, the actual one that's like... Um, or is it the one from the archive or is it this one here? This one or the one below? just the one below isn't it oh okay the other one okay so go back and turn it on Sorry, I'll be, I'm um, uh, uh, not, obviously not understanding. Oh, the one, sorry, yeah. Sorry, I forgot there's another time on the right-hand side, sorry. Rights and lefts, basics. Forgot how this area actually worked, to be fair. Put it in the middle. Let's extinguish and see what happens. Just instant. That's interesting. It's uh, very interesting indeed. Yeah. Uh, do we need to go back in here or do we need to go back to a different location? Let's 
go across the main bridge. Okay, so let's turn the main bridge on first. And then go upstairs in dark mode. That's upstairs in here, right? Whereabouts am I going to find? The room I hid in has two doors. Okay. Got about six and a half minutes left of this loop, so um Let's see if we can work it out. Yeah, that's not a bad shot, actually. Okay, so we could lure him around here and then walk around here like this. Can also hide in here. How far does he come down? I only comes as far as here. If he doesn't see us. Ideally we also sort of want him to see us when we're here and then we can walk around there. I totally missed. Totally missed the bridge. Almost reminds me a bit of playing um, Alien Isolation, learning the um, how the AI of the alien works.
No! <gasps> yeah. <laughs> it's it's a balancing act, I think. I Obviously, you, you know anyway. But it's a balancing act of kind of... Um, waiting enough time for him to, like, come towards you, but not in a way where he's starting his charge. See me. Right, where am I jumping over, LB? Here? One of nine hundred. Is that a um in ghost mode it's poop? <laughs> is it um is it a reference or is it an Easter egg or based on the um the the carrock seeds in the Breath of the Wild? Also, yikes. Also can't uh, drop our artifact there, our artifact there. Awesome. I guess why uh, in ghost mode it's a poop because I know the, um, the Korok seeds are, um, The Korok seeds are actually referenced as uh, a lot of people reference them as as poops in the game. I do know that. So um, yeah, that makes um, yeah. I I I think I got bored of finding them after about forty or fifty. <laughs> but somebody did tell me that um, the the reward for getting them all was like a, a pile of. Um, Poop. <laughs> oh, right. Is there um? So is is there anything else of interest that we should really check out here? Obviously, you said that's pretty much everything you know about the stranger. I'm sure there's loads of other tidbits and bits and pieces that um we could probably look at. Um, looking at the time though. 
I have a relatively early-ish one. An achievement for burning any slide reel in any fire. All right, well, I think we can probably um, we can probably go and do that one. Yeah, I did kind of uh, assume that there, that was a Zelda Easter egg. A, because it looked like one, and B, again, referring back to the uh, the documentary, um, there was quite a lot of reference of, like, Zelda being an inspiration. Um, I think it was, wasn't it, the Wind Waker uh, in particular? Ah, okay. I think it's just the ele elegy for the rings motif on the Zelda. Oh, okay. Um, I don't think there's any fires in here anymore, though, is there? No. All right, so we'll just go up to the. Um, we'll go over to the. Our place over here. Ah, okay. I get you. Celsius 232.78 There's an achievement for launching the scout at the artificial sun. Literally all of the slides have been burned on there as well. That's quite a cool little detail on there. Um, the artificial sun? Is that the one in the stranger? As in that. Almost.
There we go. The fire arrows. <laughs> Another Zelda reference right there. Let's take a look at the... Um, let's, uh, let's pause first. Take a look at the... Uh, the achievements. Now this one, I'm, I'm quite embarrassed to say actually. Um, my son... Um, a library share with my son and he installed it on his computer and he's actually got that one and I haven't I was quite in, I was quite disappointed though really that um you can't get that achievement in like the end in the ending when everyone sat around the campfire and you can identify everybody's everybody sat there playing their instruments I signal scoped everybody and could hear everybody um but I didn't get it From the, um, and landing the model rocket on the outer rock, um, do you have to use the geyser for that? How about we go and, um, we go and try and land our, uh, launch our ship using the gravity cannon. Okay. No. <laughs> Couldn't quite make it. Uh, no, I didn't. I use the signal scope on my. I thought I used my signal scope when I was around the campfire. I haven't replayed the ending at all. No, maybe I misremember. All right, let's just headlight massively. Away from the sun. There we go, we got it. Okay. All done. <laughs> yeah, I was quite surprised. I was expecting them all to be green. I suppose as long as they're all, as long as part of the signal is being picked up, then I suppose that's all the game really cares about. I'll restart here because it just saves me um, spending too much time, like trying to um, um, correct my velocity and end up going the right way. All right, let's go and play with toys. I find this like really difficult to use. It seems to be like easier to fly it upside down than 
anything, which is quite bizarre. Yeah, well, it's it's like literally like the the moment you, I hold like my up thrust to go up. Okay, that's. Uh, I think I may have lost it. I guess you just got to kind of wait for it to um, ping back around, right? I think it's gone. It ain't coming back. <laughs> I guess I just gotta wait for it to um, reorbit. I'm guessing though, it doesn't take particularly too long for the moon to come back round again. I don't think it's like on um, just like a normal day-night cycle where it only comes like round once a day. Uh, that is true, I'll be, I could. I assume it's a bit like the uh, the Hourglass Twins though, where it's... Um, it doesn't take too long to come back around. He says... Oh, jeez. You've, um... You've, you've got to be up there quite early, haven't you? To do that. Hard to kind of I mean I guess I could just like go so far up for a start and then hold it in place. Thing is I can't check it. I can't check the position of it while it's um so what's going on with my camera there? I guess it was going into orbit. Oh jeez, you really need to like... Huh. 
you kind of really need to It's hard to gauge like how much you really need to like get up. In front of it. What's the other thing that's like row? What's the other thing that's orbiting there? It's a little line that's orbiting. I'm going to wait till it's about a quarter away. And then I'm going to just go for it. Oh, okay. Yeah, of course. Ah, uh, went too far. That was too much. Yeah, that's not a bad call, actually. That is not a bad call. I was thinking, actually, I was thinking about, like, maybe putting the, um... Putting the scout on the Outer Rock as well, possibly. But marking it as a waypoint is probably the better way. So, uh, yeah. Thank you very much for the suggestion. Also, let go of, thank you very much for the donation, 378. Congratulations, completely out. I was still catching up on the Let's Play, but it's been one of my... Missed the rest of that. Where is it? Two seconds, I'm going to have to find that now. Streamlabs doesn't give me a thing on here, does it? You do. I'm sure there was like an alerts thing on here that I could see my alerts and everything on here. Um, no, there's just an event log. Oh, well, that nuked my chat as well. Interesting. Uh, congrats for killing the Our Wilds. I'm still catching up on the Let's Play, but it's been one of my favorites. Thank you very much. I appreciate, I appreciate that. Thank you very much for the donation. It's very, very kind of you. 
And uh, let's see if we can't um, land this model on the. Um, if we can't land this model on the on the moon as a as a thank you. That's um, that's still not. I tell you what, that that the um, the haze actually put me off there as I kind of like hit that like hazy spot at the top. I was like, uh, has it gone too far out of range or not? And then, yeah, I don't think um, that the the position of the sun and things particularly helped too much there either. Yeah, full of excuses. <laughs> All right, we'll have one more, uh, one more attempt, and then uh, we'll potentially look for. We'll go and um, see if we can't do anything else. Also, anonymous, thank you for the gift sub to Ligov. Thank you very much. Very kind, Mister Anonymous, Mrs. Anonymous, whoever you may be. Thank you very much. And um, Ligov, welcome along to the community. Oh my goodness, and it was a tier three subscription. Oh my goodness. A tier three. That is insane. Whoever that anonymous donation is, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> you are, I think you're our first tier three subscriber as well. Um, Due to the manuf <laughs> manufacture error of your ship, your ship is unable to fly this moment. You must pay five thousand dollars. Uh, Fritz, what's going on? Morning in thirteen minutes. Uh, yeah, morning in thirteen minutes. Indeed. How you doing, Fritz? How you doing, Atom? Hope you both doing very well. we go. Yay! <laughs> we landed it on the moon. <laughs> I use that with um very um Oh, it's been a fantastic game for it. We're just sort of wrapping up with um with uh, we're just wrapping up with like just some bonus spoiler kind of stuff because we did it um completely blind. Um but yeah, it's been an absolutely fantastic game. Cannot rate it highly enough. If you want to jump into something which is completely open world for you to explore at your own pace, um, definitely pick it up. Time to smash an innocent satellite? Why would I smash an innocent satellite? Are you talking about the deep space? Um, the hot shot attempts. Uh, what do you mean by the hot shot attempts? You die when you smack into the deep space satellite. Like you get an achievement. Well, I've got, I've got the one. I've got the. I've, I've had an achievement from the deep space satellite. Um. For basically rendering it useless, but I didn't realise there was one. Um, is is there a different one for that? All right, let's go to Ember Twin.
Yeah, when when we was first looking for the stranger, I came, I think it was the second attempt at looking for the stranger. I came in far too hot, and um, I bumped into the satellite, and we got the achievement then. I believe. Yeah, I uh, I I mentioned that one earlier on to LB. However, I'm under the impression that it's um, it's it's not the easiest thing to do. I mean, we'll, we'll give it a shot. We can certainly give it a shot. One thing I do need to try and do. To launch our ship on the gravity cannon. The speed run is 90 seconds? Really? I mean, I would assume it was quick. I Okay, so if the speed run is 90 seconds, I'm guessing, spoiler alert, they're flying to the eye. Well, that's one way to blow up your ship. Alf. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can you use the funnel to travel the ship at a straight line? How do you mean, Atom? That's what you get for um, recalling the ship and not um, firing your own ship off the platform. Let's try that again. I think I've had like one attempt during this let's play of trying to land on the sun station and um, yeah it, it didn't go very well I'll be honest Anybody would think I'm getting good at this game. Is this one, isn't it? Yeah, activate the gravity cannon. In three, two, one. Uh, excuse me. See you later, ship. Ship be gone. All right. We need our ship back, though. What have we got here? I need to refresh my page here. So the only one of the um, unhidden ones that we haven't got is the uh, ship logs, then. Oh, really? Well, technically it's still a gravity cannon, isn't it? So that, okay, so just to deviate slightly, when I was like, I was confused as to what was um, orbiting Timber Hearth, that light, I, I always see that light going past and I thought that that light was probably like a spaceship was in past, but that's the um, the low orbit satellite, isn't it? 
That's what that is. It's the low orbit satellite. Hmm. Okay, so. Granted, it's uh, very difficult to do, but have we got any... Um, have we got any tips or suggestions? Or... Um, Trying to land on the sun station here. And I guess now that we have the marker on here, that makes things a little bit easier. Or can I not set the waypoint? I, oh, I can't set the waypoint. I did wonder what the um, around the world in 90 seconds achievement was. I did. I I thought it was possibly just something as simple as um, need to match velocity here, please. I thought it was something as simple as just like fly around Timber Hearth in ninety seconds, obviously without doing any research into the achievement at all. Yeah, I saw, I've seen, um, I saw one of the hidden achievements, which was like, it looked like somebody was riding a wave or something. So I, but again, I thought that was maybe a, um, I thought that might have been like a Giants Deep achievement. Getting crushed by an elevator is an achievement as well. Okay. Well, that probably wouldn't be too difficult now that um, I know like the exploits. Obviously, getting to the first Forbidden Archive is relatively straightforward. LBR Hardcore Gamer. <laughs> No, MySQL, that is not the best time to be popping up on my screen. Jump over a ledge into water while an inhabitant is chasing you. All right, well, uh, let's be honest here. I think we're going to be uh, struggling for a while <laughs> to be landing on the sun station to try and get this achievement. I'm blaming SQL there on that one. got to try and um I think you just got to try and gauge where oh, 
That was close. <laughs> yeah, for, forget the previous 15 episodes. There's going to be enough fails in this uh, in this bonus episode to uh, last us the entire series. <laughs> At least with the uh, the loop not progressing too far, we haven't got uh, too long to load, reload the. Uh, the loop. I don't really need to worry about putting my spacesuit on because... I mean... Yeah, granted, it would be a lot easier if um, we could lock on to the sun station. Well, I mean, I suppose that would help. That would, that's, that's, that's what most sensible people would do, of course. I don't normally take the sensible approach, so... <laughs> what can I say? I know, I, th I think I was just going for like the landing approach first. Let's get landed on there before we even um, contemplate doing anything else. It's going too hot now. Which is um, ironic, you know, how can you go in too hot into the sun, but clearly you can. <laughs> well, it's all good fun. I mean, like going back to our conversation earlier, I don't consider this like a one of those like frustrating achievements. It's not like random, it's just, it is skill-based, so it's about learning the technique to do it and getting good at doing it. So...
Uh, well, we made it on there, but we crashed. That was a good attempt. I'll give you that. I'm just not sure, like, that's the best place to land. Or I just came in far too hot. Or... I don't know. Where is the best place to land? Is it, like... Um, the meme in the Portal 2 ch campaign, Chamber 21, they're using triple laser and tight and tilting it to guys. My test chamber is, um, uh, I haven't actually seen any of those. I don't tend to sort of like look into meme culture too much. Doctress, don't apologize, my friend. Don't apologize. Honestly. Welcome back. Let's wait for the next orbit to come around. What you've been trying to what, what you've been working on, Doctress? Doing a 3D render. Well, sometimes it's good to take a, a break from stuff. amount of times I've like had a mental block on stuff like even like for work and I've kind of like not lost motivation but I've kind of like taken a break oh there is a can you one second I've taken a break and um, come back okay, I just need to concentrate a minute Going for it. Ah, uh, what happened? Um, oh, maybe I got too close to the. Is that the entrance? Where's the entrance? Entrance on the other side. Ah. Uh. No! Come on. Stop, 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 stop. Stop. 
I can't get out! <laughs> And now I'm just going to be pulled into the sun. I'm burning! point do most people get out of the cockpit because um no i haven't how do you eject the cockpit hold d pad hold d pad down and look around in the cockpit okay All right, we're close though. We got this. It's quite nice that when you get close enough as well, like you can actually lock on to the sun station, which is really nice. I've made a complete shambles of this, though. I'll just rotate here. Ah, okay. Interesting. I guess I've never, um... I guess I've never looked around properly in the cockpit. When you would, I guess, okay, let, let's, I, I should probably try, do what LB said though, I should try. I should try it out first, because I don't know how, although it, it, it's an eject button, I don't know how it ejects me out the cockpit, so. Can I eject from a stationary position? Okay. Okay. So if I eject into the sun station, maybe I want to... Okay. We got this. Come on. We can do this. As LB said, let's channel from my inner celeste determination. Wait for it to come around again. Uh, 
waited too much. Waited too long that time. Yeah, I did. Um, I picked up on that from the uh, the documentary, actually, uh, LB. I did. Um, I did notice that they mentioned that they were originally just planning on like putting you in a box, to, like travel around in. But the more they got into it, the more they kind of like fleshed it out and made actual functioning um, bits and pieces, which is real neat. Shop. Now I'm waiting for something. <laughs> that was almost a really good attempt. Like we, we all, if I hadn't have been like traveling at such speed, we may have been able to sort of um, land on it there and then. All right, a couple more attempts, and then um, a more attempts, and then we'll call it because uh, time is getting on. That's that's one way to do it. <laughs> All right, doctors, no worries. Catch you later. That just like auto ejected me though. I didn't I didn't press the eject. Is that what's meant to happen? Like it auto ejects you?
actually had a slightly different um, navigational technique that time as well. I was kind of, instead of like trying to aim for the sun station, I was trying to aim for like where the sun station is going to hit the sun. Ow! Yeah, it's like that. Trying to sort of like hit where it's going, which obviously is a sensible thing to do. I'm not being funny though, if I'd have, uh, just going back to a previous comment from Atom there, if, if I'm only being charged like $10,000 for damaging 25,000 ships, um, it's pretty, that's pretty not, not, that's not bad going really, is it? Do the maths on that. Miles off the orbital path here. the speed about right I just need to bring it down I hate to say I am, but it's not my lucky number. <laughs> Quite clearly. Okay, let's regroup. Wait for it to come back around again. I've lost my uh, any sort of knack that I'd um, previously learned. I've just completely and utterly lost here. I don't like being defeated, though. That's the problem. I just need to improve on, like, approaching the sun. It's about finding, like, the right velocity.
landing cam will you see that that's that's an interesting point though you, you're making that point there um lb i didn't actually realize you could use the landing cam if you weren't unless it was prompted on screen so again that's um quite an interesting point I'm all out of kilter here. Jeez. That was not a good attempt at all. I was close enough then, I think. Yeah, we're uh I can't it won't even let me come out of the hatch. I think I've damaged the ship that much. Oh. Oh. I didn't realize like I had a massive hole in the side. Well, that's going to be an adventure for another day. Guys, thank you very much for hanging out with me, not only tonight, but throughout the entire journey of Outer Wilds. It has been an absolute pleasure to play this game, and it has been an absolute pleasure to share it all with you. Thanks once again to LB for the donation of this game. Um, like I said, it's, like I said uh, on Thursday? Yeah, Wednesday, Thursday. It's probably a game I would never have played um so i want to thank massive thanks to you for um you know giving me that opportunity to play this game but that's it guys 
that is it for the stream and for YouTube side of things. Outer Worlds is now done. We're going to be streaming again on Thursday. Well, Thursday and Friday will be a Portal 2 back-to-back -back stream. So we'll be playing that on Thursday, Friday. The week after that, we'll be starting a brand new Let's Play. We'll be finishing up our adventure in The Walking Dead with The Walking Dead, the final series. And then we'll be doing continuous five streams of that to get that done leading up to Christmas Eve where we'll probably have a either a Portal 2 stream on Christmas Eve or a community fun night but uh, guys once again thank you very much for hanging I really do appreciate it enjoy the rest of your week and until next time I've been Nock you've been awesome stay safe and until next time happy gaming thanks guys good night